Hello friends, this video on photosynthesis in higher plants part 21 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. We will now talk about the next pathway that is the hatch and slack pathway. So what is this hatch and slack pathway? Now when I was talking about the biosynthetic pathways, I told you that there are two types of biosynthetic pathways. One is C3 pathway and the other is C4 pathway. So C3 pathway is nothing but the Calvin cycle. So we discussed that in detail. Now we are going to talk about the C4 pathway. Now the C4 pathway is also known as Hatch and Slack pathway after the name of the scientists Hatch and Slack who demonstrated this pathway for the first time. So this pathway is applicable only for C4 plants. Now as I said, the C3 pathway is applicable to all the photosynthetic plants. So all photosynthetic plants will synthesize their sugar by C3 cycle or Calvin cycle. But this pathway is applicable only for C4 plants. Now you might ask, so does that mean that C4 plants will perform both C3 cycle as well as C4 cycle? Yes, it is somewhat like this. In C4 plants, certain in certain portion of the plant, this hatch and slack pathway will occur, while in some other portion, Calvin cycle will take place as it is. So you will get to know as we go ahead in more detail. So here the first product of carbon dioxide fixation is a C4 carbo uh, organic acid and that is why it is called a C4 pathway. So 4 carbon atom organic acid and what is that product? That product is oxaloacetic acid. Now the question is why again a C4 pathway is required when a C3 pathway already exists? That is a very logical question. When I am saying that the C3 pathway exists for all types of photosynthetic plants, so why do we at all need another type of pathway when all the photosynthetic plants can synthesize sugar using C3 cycle? Right? A quite valid question. So let us see why. Why and for whom is the C3 is the C4 pathway? Now it was observed that there were a certain set of plants which lack Rubisco enzyme in their mesophyll cells. Now, if this enzyme is not present, do you think that the C3 cycle will be able to occur? Because Rubisco enzyme is the one which helps in the first step of Calvin cycle, that is carboxylation. Now carbon fixation cannot take place without Rubisco enzyme because it is because of this enzyme that the RUBP gets carboxylated as well as oxygenated. So if this enzyme is not there in the mesophyll cells of certain plants, that means in the mesophyll cells C3 pathway cannot take place and that is why we have an alternative pathway called C4 pathway. So now you understand the C4 pathway will occur only in the mesophyll cells of, the, of some plants but in other cells wherever Rubisco enzyme is present the C3 cycle will take place. So since Rubisco enzyme is not there, therefore the C3 pathway is not possible. Hence came into picture the C4 pathway. So now the question is for whom, for what kind of plants is the C4 pathway? So which are those plants which lack Rubisco enzyme in their mesophyll cells? So mostly these are those plants which are adapted to dry top tropical conditions and it has also been seen that mostly monocotyledonous plants are c4 plants so they are adapted to dry regions and they also have a few other characteristics which characterize them as c4 plants so often the plants which show c4 pathway are also known as c4 plants and the plants following the kelvin cycle are called c3 plants so examples of some of the c4 plants are maize sugarcane millets several weeds so these are some of the examples of c4 plants that is the plants where in their mesophyll cells c3 cycle cannot happen and therefore c4 pathway takes place so now let us talk about some of the characteristics of c4 plants so by now we know that in c4 plants both 
C4 pathway as well as C3 pathway. Both of them occur. It is just that in the mesophyll cells, C3 pathway cannot take place. That is why C4 pathway occurs. Now, due to this difference in their photosynthetic pathway, how do the plants differ? Now, how will a C3 plant differ from a C4 plant because of this difference in their biosynthetic pathway? So, let us have a quick look. So, let us see what are C4 plants? So in C4 plants, the C4 pathway occurs in the mesophyll cells. Now, by now we all know what are mesophyll cells. So mesophyll layer is the middle layer of the leaves. So the cells which are present in that mesophyll layer are called the mesophyll cells. Now these cells lack the enzyme called rubisco. That is why a C3 cycle cannot take place. So C4 pathway will happen only in the mesophyll cells. However, C3 pathway will still remain as the main biosynthetic pathway because in all other cells, Rubisco enzyme is there and therefore C3 cycle can take place. So the, the process by which sugar is synthesized in case of C4 plants is still the C3 pathway because when we talk about the C4 pathway, you will see that actually nowhere in the C4 pathway sugar gets synthesized. It gets synthesized in C3 pathway only. The C4 pathway is just to facilitate the C3 pathway in uh, these plants. Now let us suppose, let us try to understand where exactly the C3 pathway takes place and where the C4 pathway takes place. Now forget about the plants for some time. Just think of a box which you see here. So what do you see on the screen? You see uh, a square, a blue colored square, right? Now, if I say that this is not a square, rather this is a cube or a cuboid, possible? At least looking at this picture, you don't think so. You think it is a square. It is not a cuboid. But when I tilt it this way, you can actually look at the depth. So this is the place where you can actually see what is there, how much depth it is there. So similarly, if you try to observe the transverse section of a dicot leaf, this is how it looks like. You see the mesophyll layer here. This, the entire thing is the mesophyll layer. This is the palisade parenchyma. This is the spongy parenchyma. And there you have the xylem and phloem. Now this xylem and phloem which you see as circular structures here, they are not circles. They are the top view of the tube. So when you actually look at it sideways, here whatever you see like this is nothing but this structure. This is what is seen here. But actually they are tubes like this. Right? This is from the side view. So from this view, you can actually see where the C3 pathway takes place and where C4 pathway. So where are the mesophyll cells? These are the mesophyll cells here. So these are the mesophyll cells and here these are the mesophyll cells. And these are the vascular bundles. These tubes are the vascular bundles and just outside the vascular bundles, these structures which you see, what are they? They are the bundle sheath cells. Now it has been observed that in the mesophyll cells, C4 pathway take place, but in the bundle sheath cells, C3 pathway take place. So what happens is the cycle starts at mesophyll layer and then from C4, from mesophyll, it gets transported to bundle sheet. In bundle sheet, C3 cycle takes place, sugar gets synthesized. And then again, transportation happens from bundle sheet to mesophyll cells. So that is how the cycle takes place in case of a C4 plant. So both the C3 cycle as well as C4 cycle, both of them take place. Right? So C4 pathway occur in the mesophyll cells and C3 cycle occur in the bundle sheath cells. And this entire cycle which takes place in a C4 plant is known as hatch and slack pathway because they demonstrated it for the first time. Now we will talk about the hatch and slack pathway in detail. But before that, let us quickly see how are C4 plants unique. Now since because of this difference of C4 plants with C3 plants, how are the behavior or structures of C4 plants different from C3 plants? So let us see what is different in a C4 plant. 
Now these plants generally have high temperature tolerance that is they can survive and sustain well in high temperatures and that is why most of these plants are adapted to survive in dry tropical regions. They lack photorespiration. The process of respiration, what is respiration? It is just the opposite process of photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, oxygen is given out and in respiration, oxygen is utilized to produce energy. So that is photorespiration, but respiration in presence of light. So in C4 plants, photorespiration does not take place. It has greater biomass productivity. So more biomass is produced by these kind of plants. Now talking about the internal structure, so if we look at their anatomy, we see that the leaves of uh, C4 plants have a special anatomy and this special anatomy is known as Kranz anatomy. So we say that C4 plants have Kranz anatomy which is not there in C3 plants. So what is so special about their leaf structure? So if you look at their leaves, this is the leaf, this is how the cross section of a C4 plant leaf would look like and this is how the cross section looks for a C3 plant. Now in a C4 plant, multiple layers of bundle sheath cells are present around the vascular bundles. So these are the vascular bundles and outside the vascular bundles if you see multiple layers of bundle sheath cells are present. So the cells which are present just outside the vascular bundles. But in case of C3 plants, not multiple layers, only single layers are present. So bundle sheath cells are not that prominent in case of C3 plants. No intercellular spaces. So if you see here, the entire mesophyll layer consists of only palisade parenchyma. No intercellular spaces, compactly arranged cells. But in case of C3 plants, if you see, there is so much of intercellular spaces. And in case of C3 plants, the mesophyll layer is distinguished between two types of uh, parenchyma. One is palisade parenchyma which are compactly arranged the top ones and the other one is spongy parenchyma with lot of intercellular spaces. So C4 plants they are more compactly arranged. Large number of chloroplasts. If you look at a C4 plant you will see more number of chloroplasts which are present in the bundle sheet cells because here the bundle sheet cells are quite prominent. Whereas in case of a C3 plant, lesser number of chloroplasts and that too they are present only in the mesophyll layer, not in the bundle sheet. As I said, the bundle sheet cells are more prominent in case of C4 plants, which is not so in C3 plants. So when you talk about the internal structure of the leaf, by looking at their internal structure, you can very easily identify which is a C4 plant and which is a C3 plant. But when you do not consider the internal structure externally, there are only few behavioral features which can distinguish between a C3 and a C4 plants like high temperature tolerance or greater biomass productivity. So let us quickly have a comparison between C4 and C3 plants. C4 plants, they have Kranz anatomy, which is missing in C3 plants. C4 plants, chloroplasts are present in bundle sheath cells because bundle sheath cells are very prominent here. Here they are not present in bundle sheath cells. Mostly they are present in the mesophyll. Mesophyll cells perform only initial fixation. In C4 plants, when you will learn about the cycle, you will see that the only the carbon fixation part is done in the mesophyll cells. But in C3 plants, the entire process of biosynthetic photosynthesis take place in the mesophyll cells. Whether you talk about carbon fixation or reduction or regeneration, everything happens in the mesophyll cells. C4 plants, if you talk about the internal structure of leaf, they are very compact with no intercellular spaces, only the palisade parenchyma present in the mesophyll layer, whereas here a lot of intercellular spaces due to the presence of spongy parenchyma. C4 plants are more efficient in photosynthesis. Why C4 plants are more efficient? Because in C4 plants, they can perform photosynthesis even when the stomata is closed. Why? 
because the carbon dioxide which they utilize that comes from inside we will see that how but they the c4 plants can perform photosynthesis whether the stomata is closed or opened but if when you talk about c3 plants they can perform photosynthesis only when stomata is open because only when stomata is open it will be able to take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and once it is able to take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere only then the process of photosynthesis can take place so that way c4 plants are more efficient in the process of photosynthesis when compared to c3 plants thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again